So joining me on the call today, I've got Fred Fennell from Hitachi Global Air Power. Welcome to the call, Fred. Thank you, David. Great to be here. So maybe give us a bit of a background into Hitachi Global Air and um, I suppose what, how long you've been involved with them and, and you know, what they actually deliver. Hitachi Global Air Power provide compressed air solutions to the Australian market. We've got manufacturing capacity in Japan, America, Malaysia, China, and we supply compressed air solutions around the world, but my area of responsibility is Australia. So we've got about 135 people operating out of eight branches around the country, supporting our customers in the cap major capital cities and major mining hubs uh, to yeah. support their, their ongoing requirements. Yeah, fantastic. So look, t today was really just about understanding how you're navigating the current economy. Because uh, I mean, as everyone's aware, it's been pretty tumultuous the past few years, um, challenge after challenge. And when you know when COVID was over, we thought we'd all be sort of home and hose, and nothing's further from the truth. So, can can you give us a bit of a snapshot of how it's affected uh, you guys? Sure. I think three main areas spring to mind immediately. One is the stabilisation of supply chains. Often uh, companies responded to the lengthening lead times by building inventory so they could maintain service levels to their customers. That brings along challenges of working capital, um, RevX costs associated with storage and movement of that product. So making sure you've got that forward demand forecast is key. Second one is around cost inflation. That really raised its head um, probably 12 to 18 months ago. And while there's been some recent indication of uh, reduction in the rate of growth of inflation, um, particularly in the US, but even in Australia, it remains a serious <coughs> challenge for our competitivity and demands that we change the way we operate, um, often calling into question supply chain relationships that have been in place for many years. Uh, and certainly mm -hmm. we have to be able to um, provide a competitive product to the market because that um, there's some levels of um, profitability that are not, not what the shareholder expects these days. And yeah, the yeah. I, and I guess with runaway inflation, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's quite challenging for a, a supplier of product because you're getting hit from all sides, aren't you? Well, you've got exposure to not just the underlying material cost inflation, you've got impact of the FX change and foreign exchange changes as interest rate differential between America and Australia continues to persist, it drives the Australian dollar into a weaker position, which then makes every imported product more expensive again. So there's mm -hmm. multiple, multiple challenges there that have to be have to be met. Um, and some of that can be achieved with uh, enhanced product offerings offering customers more value, which they might be prepared, prepared to pay additional um, sums of money for, particularly around the energy efficiency piece, because we've all seen that fundamental energy input costs, be it gas or electricity, lift substantially to all our businesses yeah. over the last year. And so customers are demanding more efficient product. Uh, and often, there are many ways to uh, reduce their cost just by improving the maintenance on their system. So there's lots of, right. lots of ways people can, can attack that. And probably the third yeah. theme that I would talk about is the shortage of human capital. You know, at unemployment at 3.6%, it's really hard to find good people. You know, so the importance of retaining good people, because every time you bring someone on, there's a training burden, there's a distraction burden, uh, as those people come up to speed, we need to work out how we can put a better employee value proposition to our employees, how we can yeah. automate the donkey work. I, you know, I've got a mantra, get the donkey work out of the business. The new yeah. IT systems allow us the opportunity to significantly um, remove that non-value added, boring, repetitive data entry type work. And that can allow a business to scale uh, yeah. at, at effectively no cost rather than just yeah, right. continuing to plug people on and it gets over the issue of uh, of uh, that addressing the cost base. So it feeds back into the inflation question because as inflation goes up, everyone wants to get 
CPI plus 2% wages, and then you end mm. up with the dog chasing its tail, driving more inflation. Uh, it just becomes more and more challenging to, to run a business. Yeah, yeah, and I think you've touched on an important point there, which is um, this idea of forced innovation. Because in a, in a normal economy, people, I hate to say it, people get fat and happy, right? They just uh, run their business because it's profitable. But as soon as all these pressures arise, all of a sudden, you go, oh, gee, we have to do things better. We have to become more efficient. We have to improve the value proposition to clients, which is, is innovating. And as you said, technology plays a big part these days. But um, even logistics, because I imagine like with transport and the way that the transport costs have been, that would really be you know, a big challenge for you guys. Oh, I'm sure. You know, there's been such an enormous variation in um, transport costs. You know, we've mm. seen full containers, 40-foot containers out of China cycle in the freight cost cycle from $1,500 to $10,000 a container back down to $1,500 a container. Um, it's just insane, the, the freight variance um, between different yeah. parts of the world. And the worst freight costs are onshore Australia. If you've got to get product across to Perth, it costs you arms and legs. You know, it's not, <laughs> it's not rational. I mean, I can move stuff from America to here cheaper than I can get it to Perth. Um, so right. there's, you know, efficiencies that, you know, we need to bring into our system. And some of the other major pressures on us, I think, are the issues of how do we address climate change? That will require more efficient equipment. It will mean the phase out of diesel powered compressors. So we've got to be thinking how are we evolving our product lineup to walk away from liquid hydrogen carbons, a traditional sense, and transitioning to perhaps biofuels or electricity or battery or hydrogen or a combination of that technology. So the governments are going to get very involved in that in the legislative space through emissions uh, standards and so forth over the coming years. And as customers, um, they're going to be demanding the product to uh, meet those new government requirements. So it's a really exciting period. It's like every 100 years you see that transition from coal or from wood to coal or coal to liquid hydrocarbons. Now you're moving the elect to electrification. So you've got this cadence yeah. of every 100 years. And we're at an extremely exciting period of uh, human development. Uh, and yes. we've, as we've seen with the fires in British Columbia, we need to accelerate our, our efforts in this space. We're not moving yes. fast enough and we're in grave danger of not meeting our own standards that our, led, our government have set for us. Mm -hmm. So really, like uh, it's almost a signalling to business to step up. Uh, the government supporting them, even I suppose all of the all of the groups are supporting them. The, the you know the sustainability groups are supporting this. Um, it it all makes sense. And sometimes, unfortunately, it does take that pressure of the economy to force people to to develop. Yeah, and I think we're seeing it now. You're watching people. We just opened a new branch in Perth. You know that new branch had. 100 kilowatt of solar on the roof. It had batteries on the wall. It had, you know, yeah. EV charging points. It had completely recycled water onto the garden. So I think everyone in the economy, as um, the opportunity arises, as assets are retired and new assets are bought on, you know, people are thinking about how do we lower those import costs by doing yeah. more generation ourselves. It, and in the end, I think it'll just make good business sense. Yeah, and, and I think the early adopters, uh, the people who not only will lead the charge, but take, the, take advantage of that sort of that profitability of, of really stepping in early. Mm. And they'll also get the support of the government, the support of the media. So it, it sort of makes sense to really be thinking, how do I do things better and how do I move towards zero? Yep. Um, look, Fred, um, I suppose we've got an event coming up that you're going to be sort of sharing some more of the details. Can you give us a bit of a sneak peek as to what some of the concepts might be that you're going to cover? Well, I think, and it's important to keep these things general, I think, because you want it to apply to as many people as possible. You yeah. know, one of the key things I'd be looking, um, inviting business owners and business leaders, uh, which I'm sure they're doing already, is just really looking at how you can use IT to re reduce the burden on your staff. Work out what processes you can automate with new technology. You know, I'd be yeah. looking at, how do you take that donkey work out of the activity and automate things so you can scale your company without putting additional people in? 
you know, because if you get the computers to do it, there's no long service leave, there's no weekends. It just it just works. Uh, so I think yep. that 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 question of workflow automation is is a is a very fertile ground to to be looking in. I think. Yeah, yeah, and and I think the other sort of element of that is that now that we're a global economy, you know, we can tap into resources from any country to do this. Um, lower skilled activity as well. So I think, you know, as, as our as our employees are starting to look for more wages to accommodate, you know, the rising inflation, um, the business owner's response is not just pay people more, it's how do I get more value out of you? And what you've just described within a, with the IT innovation is saying, well, if, I'm, if I need to pay you 20% more, I need 20% more productivity from the role. Yeah, we're a high, we are a high cost country. Uh, you yeah. know, compared to if you benchmark an engineer's wage from here to China to India to even America, we are high cost. So you've got to yeah. be thinking, how do I utilise? And we're short people. So it's really an imperative that we conserve and we have, you know, higher paying jobs for more complex tasks that require that human intervention um, yeah. and then automate everything else. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, this, this is a great track to go down because I think this helps with the idea for the business owner to say, well, rather than how do I afford to pay people, how do I get more value out of the people mm. that are high skilled by using technology and the resources around me to minimize the amount of time wasting that they're doing? So, Absolutely. I'm super excited about this because I think you're right. It is a hundred year event. And I think for the people who are sort of able to see into the future a little bit, they're, they're going to sort of take advantage of what's coming. So Fred, thanks so much for your time today. Really looking forward to the presentation in a few weeks time. And um, yeah, it'll be great to hear a bit more from you on the day. So thank you. Terrific. Thank you, David.